in July 1964 in the Harlem and Bedford Stuyvesant neighborhoods of New York, James Powell, a 15 year old African American, was shot and killed by police Lieutenant Thomas Gilligan in front of Powell's friends and about a dozen other witnesses. Angry people take to the streets. Unrest that goes on night after night with scores injured and hundreds arrested. Los Angeles, Watts, California, the summer of 65. On August 11, 1965, Marquette Fry, a 21-year-old African-American man, was pulled over for drunken driving. After he failed a field sobriety test, officers attempted to arrest him. Marquette resisted arrest with assistance from his mother, Rena Fry. A physical confrontation ensued in which Marquette was struck in the face with a baton. Meanwhile, a crowd of onlookers had gathered. Rumors spread that the police had kicked a pregnant woman who was present at the scene. Six days of civil unrest followed, motivated in part by allegations of police abuse. This is what produced the Watts revolt. In 1966, there was yet more. This time in Cleveland, from July 18th to the 23rd, the Huff Riot blazed on. 1966 city officials at first blamed black nationalists and communist organizations for the riots, but historians generally dismiss these claims today, arguing that the cause of the Huff Riots were primarily poverty and racism. Some say a minor racially charged dispute at a neighborhood bar at East 79th Street and Huff Avenue sparked the riot. Then came the disastrous summer of 1967. Chaos enveloped more than 160 American cities and towns. The most ruinous riots leading to 43 deaths in Detroit and 26 in Newark. With the nation reeling that summer, President Lyndon B. Johnson created a task force to explore the roots of the unrest and possible remedies. The National Advisory Commission on Civil Disorders, led by Governor Otto Kerner Jr. of Illinois, released a report in February 1968, known as the Kerner Commission. Its findings still echo across the land, racked once again by turmoil, turning largely on uneasy relations between black communities and police departments. Welcome back, everybody. Everybody who's come back to check out my videos, listen to my videos, support. I appreciate you. Those who are new, I appreciate you as well. Let's get into this. Today, I am doing a video about the Kerner Commission Report. I would like to know how many people know about the Kerner Commission Report. How many Americans, how many black Americans know about this Kerner Commission report. Have you ever heard about it in school anywhere? The main group that needed to know about this report are black Americans and white people. You know of the ones who were equipped to make real true changes in this country. We call the land of the free for certain groups. If they heeded Governor Otto Kerner Jr.'s report and actively made sincere changes, those changes could have benefited every black American's lives. This would have been a completely different place, this country. Oh, and there would be no need or room to continue talking about the ills and continuing destruction to the black American family and communities due to the roots of slavery planted deeply underground. So you white folks that have an issue with hearing about slavery, oh my God, here they go again, always complaining. Hey, you take that up to the ones that had the power and ability to make true changes. Because let me tell you the truth. 
Let me tell you something, maybe something you you guys don't have a clear understanding of. If certain things, if, if certain people in positions that can make changes, real viable changes, didn't like the way certain things were, they can change that instantly. It wouldn't have to keep going on. Like, for example, I'm not a police hater. Matter of fact, I appreciate them when I need them. I don't have an issue with police. What I have an issue with is the, the biasness when it comes to some police officers. I feel like some people got on the police department to be, you know, jerks and abusive to certain people. Let's just be real with it. Don't act like everybody on the police department got a Superman mentality and they just want to help everybody in need. Let's be real. Don't act like a child. Be real. But anyway, if a lot of things, if a lot of people in position that have the authority and power to ch make changes, really wanted to see changes, it would be done. But you got a lot of people, you know, pockets getting fatter, a lot of special interests, a lot of people doing favors, and a lot of people that just cool with turning their heads and looking the other way. A lot of people getting threatened. Hey, if you do this, I know about what you did, you know. But I can go on and on. So let me continue. If this Kerner report was heated and respected and if they really wanted to see a change and stop seeing the oppression intentionally done to black folks, it could have changed this whole country. It could have been a better place, not just for people who are white and people who simulate to become white. Or put on paperwork they're white. It would have been a better place for everybody. So let's get going. President Lyndon B. Johnson specifically requested the report to be done. Johnson wanted to know why the black community was having a series of riots in the summer of 67. The fact that Lyndon wanted a report done to know what the issue was in the black community said a lot to me. It showed me how far removed white America is with regards to the ramifications within the entire black American community caused by damages done by their ancestors. Intentional damages done by their ancestors and their ancestors' offspring still encouraged and perpetuated today. It's like perfect example. Say I did something intentionally or accidentally that caused somebody's property to be damaged or caused a harm caused harm to their person. But I walk around my head in the clouds like I don't have anything to do with it. That's generally the consensus of a lot of white Americans. Like we ain't got nothing to my I wasn't here. I was I didn't put y'all in chains, but you are but that's what we keep saying. Like, do you have a block when it comes to black folks? We know the people that's existing today had nothing to do with slavery physically. And if you did, you you need to be on every television every television news station in the world. We know you didn't physically have anything to do with it. What we're saying is you're benefiting from it, and some of you guys are perpetuating it. Some of you guys are so racist, it's disgusting. The devil probably was like, ooh, y'all look too racist for me. I'm just making a joke. But, um, yeah, some of you guys are so racist, I don't even see how you sleep at night. Your heart is so... And you notice, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I notice that people who are, like, hardcore racist, they, they had the same look of hatred in their eyes and on their face. Even when they're in a customer service-oriented position and they're trying to conceal how they really feel, I see it. Now, maybe it's just me. It's God's discernment. I can just see you guys. I can see you for who you really are. But I see that look you cannot hide it and if you look at old pictures of the past like what is it general nathan forrest or whatever racist they took who um they have a picture of image of past and present you see that hatred in their eyes it looked the same way that every other racist the same look of hatred in their eyes is passed on to everyone else so let's go on. The report's results suggested that one main cause of urban violence was white racism and suggested that white America bore much of the responsibility for black rioting and rebellion. You hear that, white folks? This is a report that was conducted by primarily 
white folks. This was done in uh, what, 1967 or 66? 1967. So you know how the landscape looked in the 60s. Let's not play games. All the black love and all the things that was going on in our community. You know the majority of the, when you saw executives, whether it be the government, on down the corporations, on down the school boards, that those people identified with white American. So this was a predominantly white commission that was commissioned by executive order from the president to do a study. And that study was conducted in majority of white black ghettos. The, the interviewers of black folks in the ghetto was done by white folks. And they said that you guys bore much of the responsibility. White America bore much of the responsibility for black rioting and rebellion. I know it's hard for y'all to digest that because you guys been accustomed to living in a world that not too many other groups on this of this earth can ever imagine or have access to. So you want to believe that all the atrocities and the problems and the failures in other groups has is solely them. You don't have anything to do with it. Yes, you do. And it's time to wake up. Either you got you gonna wake up now or you gonna wake up later. One day you gonna wake up and you gonna be asking folks, please, please, we didn't, we didn't know. And then they gonna be looking at you like, whatever. Let's continue. Martin Luther King Jr. said this about the report. Physicians warning of approaching death with a prescription for life. He basically was saying here, this is the diagnosis. The examination was conducted. This is the diagnosis. You can heed it or not. And look at 2023. They did not heed it. Because they didn't want that. The powers that be don't want this. They don't want the division to be eradicated. They don't want it. And if anyone took a step out of their own anger and biasness and and prejudiceness, you would stop and see that every group has one common enemy. Do you really want me to say who the common enemy is? I thought not. I don't think I have to say it. The commission's final work, report of the National Advisory Commission on Civil Disorders, our current report, was issued on February 29, 1968, after seven months of investigation. The report became an instant bestseller. More than 2 million Americans bought copies of the 426-page document. I, I bought um, a copy of the report. I bought it on Amazon. Amazon. If I can remember, I'm going to put the link to the report in the description. I advise anyone who's really serious about wanting to know what the issue is in this country and black Americans, go buy the report. Go buy the report. Black folks didn't do the report. I'm going to keep saying that throughout this video or videos if I have to do a second part. We didn't do the report. White people did the report. And those people had the courage and the conviction to say what this true issue is. It's not black folks being lazy. It's not black folks being animals or savages. It's black people being frustrated and tired tired of you putting your foot on their necks or backs and later on in the report I'm gonna read what this young lady said I forgot what um what um organization she was a part of in the 60s but she said you keep putting your foot on our back we gonna break your legs <clears throat> let's continue its primary finding was that the riots resulted from black and Lat Latino frustration and at the lack of economic opportunity. Again, Martin Luther King Jr. pronounced the report a physician's warning of approaching death with a prescription of, for life. You know, you know, you know what I've noticed when I was a child? I noticed this when I was a child and then I knew something was wrong. I didn't know, I didn't really know how to process it, but I knew something was wrong. I noticed that when I came out of my community, which was lacking and sparse, but you know, I really didn't notice it to an extent as a child, as I did when I got older. But coming from my community, I saw the stark contrast of how different my community looked compared to those that lived on the west side green luscious grass 
nice luxury vehicles, nice clothes, nice shoes, clean streets. I used to always wonder why everywhere I went, no matter where I was, black, white people always seem to always have money. They were, they had the nicest houses. Their cities and, and, and communities always looked pristine. Why? I used to have that thought as a child. You see how y'all be effing with children's minds? and You need to keep your hands off the children. You know how many black people, children's minds have gotten effed up due to racism? <sighs> Jesus. President Lyndon Johnson established the National Advisory Commission on Violence and Civil Disorders, better known as the Kerner Commission, to examine the causes of the racial unrest in Detroit, Newark, and other American cities. The president primarily wanted an investigation of the rioters and what it caused the explosion of racial violence. He expected he was white. Lyndon expected that the Kerner Commission would find evidence that a black militant conspiracy had instigated the violence, which it did not. See, in his mind, he was like, you know what, let's find out for a fact, boys. Smoking his expensive cigar, hidden room where they talk they mess. We're going to find out what's wrong with the niggers. Well, I want to know, what are they upset about now? Just destroying their little ghettos. I mean, you don't have much. What you have, you're destroying it. I don't understand the niggers. I mean, we treat them well. What else do they want? They're not in chains anymore. Shouldn't they be happy? Henry, I want you to come. To, I want you to gather together your most brilliant white minds and have them go out and to the ghettos. You know, I don't think they're afraid. Get the bold ones, the ones that are not cowardice. You know how the ghetto is. Go out and find out what is going on with the black folks. Why are they so angry? <laughs> he just knew that black folks was going to be the problem. Then his wig got flipped when he found out white folks, the brilliant minds, came back and said, No, actually, sir, white folks are the black people's problems. Been that way since... They put the slave, the, uh, the, the chains on them and had them working in them damn cotton plantation fields. Instead, the Kerner Report released in 1968 placed the, the fundamental blame for the urban crisis on white institutions and white racism. Exasperated by police brutality. Surprise, surprise. Oh my God, the police? What? They found that out? You know I'm being sarcastic. In his investigation, the Kerner Commission visited Detroit and a number of other cities that had experienced racial unrest, interviewing a broad range of actors from mayors and the police chiefs to the community activists and black militants. The inquiry focused on three questions that President Johnson had placed on his agenda. What happened? Why did it happen? What could be done to prevent it from happening again? After all, they don't like when their property gets messed up. They don't care what you niggers do to your property, whatever property you might have. But they don't like when you touch there. So when you start touching there, that's when they got to find out what the hell is going on. The Kerner Report was the most hard-hitting indictment of white racism and racial segregation produced by an American government agency are commissioned up to that point. The opening summary made clear that mob rule will not be tolerated but placed the primary responsibility for the civil unrest on white Americans and white institutions. The section on why did it happen identify racial segregation and discrimination in housing, education, and employment that created hopelessness and despair in the inner <laughs> I'm, about, I'm not laughing out of ha 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 I'm laughing like out of um just my favorite word the audacity I can't believe that some people walk around in this country really like really not trying to understand or admit that 
where the issue comes from. I mean, I don't care how Hispanics supposedly feel about blacks and blacks feel about them and Asians or what have you, non-whites, how you guys feel about each other. But you got to know, honestly, what's the root of the problem? Let's be real with it. Come on, stop playing the games. Let's be real with it. What's the root of your problem? It ain't me. And I, I really, what's amazing to me, not a good amazing, is how so many people have actual issues with black Americans. And black Americans have never did a damn thing to you guys. Black Americans have, have been spending, fighting for over 400 years to keep their heads above water. How the hell are, do, do black Americans have the ability to go around messing with other groups to cause you guys to have so much dis? respect and hatred towards us what did black americans do to you guys that had is so much hatred is it hatred or is it envy which one is it i mean how can black americans be fighting for their lives for over 400 years against these people that literally put them in chains and had the ability or the concentration to f with you to cause you to dislike them Ooh, let me continue White society is deeply implicated in the ghetto. White institutions created it. White institutions maintained it. White society condones it. The Kerner Commission concluded. You know how the ghettos was created. By the Federal Housing Administration. Let's continue. You know, at that time, World War II and, and a little bit after and, and so forth, um, who was in the Federal Housing Administration? I can guarantee you it wasn't people that look like me. <laughs> if it was, they was really in the back, like in the back. If they had a basement, they had like a 14 level basement. Black folks was under the 14th level basement. White racism is essentially responsible for the explosive mixture which has been accumulating in our cities since the end of World War II. The Kerner Report also issued a stark warning. This is our basic conclusion. Our nation is moving toward two societies, one black, one white, separate and unequal. The reaction to last summer's disorder has quickened the movement and deepened the division. Discrimination and segregation have long permeated much of American life. They now threaten the future of every American. This deepening racial division is, is not inevitable. The movement apart can be reversed. Choice is still possible. Our principal task is to define that choice and to press for a national resolution. To pursue our present course will involve the continuing polarization of the American community and ultimately the destruction of basic democratic values. The alternative is not blind repression or capitulation to lawlessness. It is the realization of common opportunities for all within a single society. The situation have become even worse since the summer of 1967. Because of white backlash against the civil rights movement and continued white flight to the suburbs, the Kerner Commission presented Americans with three alternatives. Number one, we can maintain present policies and the inadequate and failing effort to achieve an integrated society. Two, we can adopt a policy of enrichment aimed at improving dramatically the quality of ghetto life while abandoning integration as a goal. Number three, we can pursue integration by combining ghetto enrichment with policies which will encourage Negro movement out of central city areas. The Kerner Commission strongly endorsed the third option, enrichment through massive resources for urban centers combined with racial integration as an explicit policy goal. The report warned that the first option stay in the course would lead to more violent protests by African Americans in the inner city and more racial polarization throughout the nation. The commission sounded this as an alarm. To continue present policies is to 
make permanent the division of our country into two societies one largely one largely negro and poor located in the central cities the other predominantly white and affluent located in the suburbs with outlining areas the report argued that the second option the black power or separate but equal approach would also fail because white society would never share resources equally and racial polarization would accelerate the current report declared that only a commitment to national action compassionate massive and sustained with racial integration and equal distribution of resources as the primary goals will resolve the urban crisis and again like i'm going to keep saying throughout the this series that or this report this video for on this kind of report if you've been living in this country long enough and you have had the opportunity to go throughout these communities in this country these cities these poor and affluent communities you know you 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 either you are brain dead and you don't want to know the truth or you know the truth but you want to be blind you got to know it's something bigger than groups of people that's doing this with all the intelligence and brilliancy and gifts that black Americans have, there's no one where in the world black Americans should be the ones that own less than 1% in this country and the ones who are the most poverty stricken. You got to know it's something bigger going on. Either, like I say, either you don't want to know or you know and you just don't give a damn. The man said this in 1968. It's been going on pro before 68, but I'm saying there was an actual report done by government officials and people elected to be on this commission that went around throughout the nation and interviewed black folks and then went to other people in, in leadership and positions and, and they came up with the conclusion that we we know black folks know but it seems other groups want to sit here and play dumb i'm like being just lazy and they don't want to sometimes i'll be wanting to just like punch you in your throat so you can stop talking for the rest of your life because you want to sit here and you want to pretend like you don't know what's going on the same people that are oppressing people who look like me they are doing it to you too but if you're willing to be anti-black they might do and not as they might not oppress you as much but you're still being oppressed. Step out of line and see, see won't they come with the whips real quick and put you right back in your place. But what you don't realize is that what you're helping to do against us by co-signing co with them and agreeing to be anti-black for the little change they give you, it's, it's gonna turn on you. It's only a matter of time that their aggression is gonna turn on you because that's what they do. If you're no longer beneficial to them, you're gonna be you're gonna be going through the same thing, and then you're gonna look to us. Well, what's up, black people? Can we all get along? We're in the same category. No, 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 no. Cause like, but prior to them kicking you to the curb, you you was their little pet, doing whatever they wanted you to do. Now you want us to get along with you? Want us to join up with you? No. Should have thought about that. Anyway, I will be thanks in advance. This is the end of part one. I will be doing part two as soon as I can. Thank you for um, your support. Thank you for listening. Thank you for liking. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for all that. I really do appreciate it. And um, I'll be back when I can. Thank you. Have a good day.